Hi folks, this is Eric White. Today I'm going to cover at a high level styling in OpenXML word processing ML documents. And I'm also going to cover sections. As soon as you need to make a document that is a little more complex than the most simple document, you're going to want to know how to deal with styles and often you're going to want to create sections to control pagination, to control page sizes, and to control margins. To get started on talking about styles, let's create a little document. We'll insert a paragraph and we'll style it as heading one. We'll create another paragraph. Initially, we'll style it as heading one. We'll change it to italic. Then down here, I'm going to define a new style. I'll call it heading one italic. I'll insert a little table, a two by two table. And in the Design tab, I'll click on one of these designs that will apply a table style to it. And finally, let's define a character style. I'll make this bold. I'll now come over here. I'll click this button to define a new style. I'll call it My Bold Style. And I'm going to change the style type to character and click OK. And now I can come here and I can actually use My Bold Style and style another word in that sentence. Now let's go take a look at the markup. Save it, close it. I'll drag this document onto Visual Studio. We'll take a look at it in the Visual Studio OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool. I'll expand Word and open up document.xml. I'll format the XML. We can walk through this markup and see the evidence of all of the various styles that I just applied. Up here at the top, we can see where this first paragraph has heading one applied to it. The next paragraph has heading one italic applied to it. We made heading one italic be based on heading one, so let's go see that. The way we do that is we open up the styles part. I'll format the XML. Here is the heading one italic style, and you can see it's based on heading one. This demonstrates the inheritance capabilities of styling in OpenXML, that one style can be based on another style, and if the derived style doesn't override some aspect of formatting, then that formatting comes from the base style. If the base style doesn't define that aspect of formatting, then it comes from its base style. Back in the main document part for test.docx, here we can see that the table is styled with the table style of light list. I'll talk about table styles in detail in the screencast in this series on tables. As you might imagine, Styling that is directly applied at the paragraph or run level overrides the styling that is applied in the styles part. So for instance, if I come to this run right here and I add a new element to the run properties, I'll add the bold element and I'll add w colon val equals zero, which turns off bolding on that run. I'll save it. And now we'll open the document and you can see that the paragraph is in fact 
not bolded. There is one more important aspect to the styling of a word processing document. This aspect is the default properties that are applied to paragraphs and runs at a global level. If we go to the styles part, format the XML, we can see at the beginning of the style part that there is this element doc defaults. Underneath doc defaults, there is a RPR default, and this is the default run properties that are applied to characters throughout the entire document. And down here, we can see the default paragraph properties that are applied to the entire document. As an example, I'll change the run properties for the entire document. I'll come here, I'll add a w colon u element, and I'll add a w colon val equal single. This will in fact add a single underline under every single paragraph in the document where underlining isn't overridden by either a style or at the run level. I'll save it and open the document and you can see that all of the text is now underlined. In the hierarchy of styling, at the base level or at the bottom are the document defaults. Those values are then overridden by anything that is defined in table styles. Table styles are overridden by any styling that is defined at the paragraph level. Paragraph styling is overridden by anything defined in numbering styles. I haven't discussed numbering styles here. I'll discuss numbering styles in detail in the screencast on numbering. And above that, any styling applied in a character style overrides styling underneath it. And finally, the highest priority of styling is direct formatting on paragraphs and runs. Let's go back to the style part in our test document. And here in the paragraph properties, you can see the spacing element. And the spacing element defines both the space between lines in a paragraph and the space before and after paragraphs. There are some very specific rules about how vertical spacing is put together. You can look at this screencast that tells you in exacting detail how vertical spacing works in word processing documents. Next, let's examine sections. I'll create a new document, open it. I'll add six paragraphs with one sentence in each paragraph. I'll set my insertion point before this fourth paragraph. I'll go to page layout. I'll insert a break and I'll tell it I want to insert a section break and start the new section on the next page. Now I'll come up to the first section. I'll add a heading here. This is text in the heading in the first section. I'm going to come to the heading in the second section and I'm going to turn off this link to previous. If link to previous is turned on, then this section will have the same headers and footers as in the previous section, but I don't want that. Instead, I want to change the text so that it says, this is text in the heading in the second section. So we can review, we can see here in this first section, I have the text, this is text in the heading in the first section. And down here, there's a heading and it has, this is text in the heading in the second section. Save it, close it, switch over to Visual Studio and reload it. First thing to look at is document.xml. And what you can see is that in the last paragraph of the first section, in the paragraph properties, there is a sect PR element. This is the section properties. In addition, you can see under those section properties that there is a header reference. The header reference has a relationship ID of RID7. 
The section properties have a few other elements such as those that define the page size and the page margin. And if I drop all the way down to the bottom of the main document part, you can see that the element immediately after the last paragraph element is another section property element. And this one also has a header reference and it points to a header using the relationship ID of RID8. It also has page size and page margin elements. The key point I wanted to make here is that there is a slight difference in the markup between sections that are not the last section in the document and the last section in the document. To reiterate, sections other than the last section document have a section property element as a child of the paragraph property element in the last paragraph of the section. The last section of the document has a section property element that is a following sibling to the last paragraph in the section. It's just a slight difference in how to deal with sections. You have to take this into consideration when you're writing code to deal with sections. And as we saw, the first section has a relationship ID of RID 7 to a header, and the last section has a relationship ID of RID 8 to a header. And if I expand the document.xml node, I can see these relationships. If you're not familiar with these relationships, go back and view the screencast on open packaging conventions, and all of this will be very clear to you. If I click on header one and bring up the properties window, I can see in fact that this is a relationship that has a relationship ID of RID seven. And if I click on header two, I can see that this relationship has RID eight as its relationship ID. And if I drop down here and open up header one, I can find the text. This is the text in the heading in the first section. And if I open up header two, format the XML, I can see the text for the heading in the second section. Key points about sections. First of all, there is this slight difference in how markup is put together for sections other than the last section and how markup is put together for the last section. And also that sections contain references to relationships that then point to other parts that define headers and footers. If you've looked at the screencast on open packaging conventions, then if you'll recall the section on explicit and implicit relationships, these header references are examples of explicit relationships to other parts. This is the end of this screencast on word processing ML. In the next screencast, we're going to look at annotations in detail. In the annotations screencast, I'll cover comments, bookmarks, range permissions, spelling and grammar, and revision tracking. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new content that we're putting together. Follow me on Twitter at ericwhitedev. Follow OpenXML on Twitter at openxmldev. And you can find my personal blog at ericwhite.com.